Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of thy divine love. Send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Ghost has instructed the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same spirit to be truly wise and ever to rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Sorrowful and immaculate heart of Mary, pray for, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for, pray for us. us. Saint all you holy angels and archangels, pray for, pray for us. us. And of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. This is a talk on marriage, a very important subject because uh, never has marriage been so undermined and attacked than in our time and in our day. In the last hundred years, Pope Pius XI, back in uh, the 1800s, he already forewarned, condemning in the syllabus of errors, he condemned this proposition. Those who said that by the law of nature, the marriage tie is not indissoluble. And in many cases, divorce, properly so-called, may be decreed by the civil authority. In other words, the Freemasons have long worked to undermine the, the authority of the church, the union of church and state, and the dissolving of Christendom. And part of that dissolving on the ground level is the destruction of marriage and the education of children. That is why uh, Charles I of Austria, a great saintly uh, uh, emperor, and uh, he was exiled, and he died in exile with his wife and family, and his body's incorrupt. But the, he was told by the Austro-Hungarian government that was run, taken over by the Freemasons, you can come back, but the deal is you let us have a hold on everything that pertains to marriage and education. So marriage is one of the key things the enemy knows. Once you dissolve marriage, you've destroyed society, you've destroyed the family, and mankind, children raised without proper upbringing, proper family structure, they are fodder, they are goyim, they are ripe for being uh, misled and falling to all errors and their eternal damnation. So let's uh, briefly look at the importance of this holy sacrament. The sacrament of matrimony is firstly a sacrament. It was instituted by Christ to give, gr to give grace, and the ministers of this sacrament are not the priest or nor the bishop. It's the very husband and wife. The sacrament is between one man and one woman. One man and one woman. Let that be stressed a thousand times in this day uh, because uh, the modern world is deeply perverse, reviving the vices of Sodom and Gomorrah. The, this is an attack right on the sacredness of marriage. Let it be also said that uh, one man and one woman preparing for marriage, this is called courtship, uh, the modern term dating, but dating is, uh, is associated with just basically fornication and um, putting oneself in occasion of sin. And that's, that's just common sense. You don't put yourselves in occasions of sin. The old wise wisdom of our ancestors, when courting, you keep with family and friends. When courting, you don't put yourself alone when you can put yourself in a danger of falling and uh, putting in, in it, it's really a lack of charity towards the woman or to the, the man that you're courting because you want to help each other keep the state of grace. You want to help each other to heaven. And that's the purpose of the sacrament of matrimony. It's a sacrament that Christ instituted and it gives the grace. So preparing for this grace, the best way to prepare for marriage of course, it's make a, an Ignatian retreat, pray, seek advice of uh, wise parents, read on the encyclicals of the popes on marriage, Casti Canubi of Pope Pius XI, Pope Leo XIII also wrote on marriage, Archbishop Fulton Sheen has many conferences on marriage, which are very good, and uh, he has a very good book called 
Three to get married. The husband, the wife, and Almighty God. Three get married in a marriage. Preparation also means uh, not only avoiding the occasions of sin, but a positive preparation. And uh, this begins once a, a boy discerns or a girl that they're meant to be married by prayer, by discerning God's will, that everything should be a preparation for this. The normal teaching of the Catholic Church is the man should be able to support a family, more or less, when he's married. And uh, the wife should be, and any woman should know this, it's very important for families to raise their girls to be girls. That is, all the virtues proper to the woman, which are being undermined today by the, the turning our women into masculine beasts. So what should a girl know? She should, before even considering getting married, she should know how to cook, she should know how to sew, she should know how to take care of a house, she should know how to take care of children, and love children, and love to be what is, what pertains to the home. Uh, granted, a lot of women today have to work to help support the family. That is a, a tactic, certainly, of the enemy of the Freemasons and uh, to dissolve the Catholic family. But where a woman has to work, she always has to keep in mind that's not normal. It's not the normal thing. She can help her husband, but that's an exception. And it always must be seen to be an exception. Uh, needless to say, the woman should be, firstly, also be a woman. That is, dress according to her nature. The Holy Ghost says in Scripture, it is an abomination before God for a woman to dress like a man, and it's also an abomination, vice versa, for a man to do up his fingernails and dress up like a woman. That gravely offends God, and it really wrecks the minds of the young. Uh, Bishop de Castro Mayor used to say, pants on a woman is more harmful than miniskirts. Why? Because miniskirts tempts the flesh, but pants on a woman attacks the mind, attacks the mind, and uh, it affects the woman, and it brings in the whole modern mentality and the con contraceptive mentality, the career woman uh, that Pope Pius XI warned about, this, this error called personalism in marriage, where marriage is for me to fulfill my career, my personal, uh, and my personal dreams, but that's not the case, and we'll come to that. So in preparing for marriage, uh, the courtship is very important. Keep with family and friends. Um, get to know the family. And uh, boys who get married, learn to see what the mother of your bride is like, because that's very much what she'll probably be like. If she dominates the home and is a grouch and, and, uh, and rules, with an iron rod over her husband, <laughs> that is not probably the woman you want to marry. Um, but you want to make sure, firstly, the boy or girl you marry has the faith, the Catholic faith of tradition. And might I add, not a liberal faith like St. Peter's, and now the new position of the, the Society of Pius X with this whole endeavor to compromise with Rome and come under the agreement with Rome, and uh, the compromising of the faith that actually has taken place already by the doctrinal declaration and general chapter statement. So you got to be aware of that too. You got to do your homework. You, but you must be Catholic in the full sense of the word. You just keep the faith that Christ gave us. And you want to make sure the one you marry has the same true Catholic faith. The sacrament, one man and one woman, Christ instituted it to be. One, what God has put together, no man can put asunder. And that's why the popes have so vehemently condemned, the good popes have condemned the dissolving of marriage by the state. The idea that the state and uh, justice of the peace can make a marriage and dissolve a marriage is completely false. They have no authority from God to do this, and it's an usurpation against the authority of God and the church that he established, the Holy Roman Catholic Church. So, when you get married, you're one. 
two in one flesh. St. Paul will say, Christ has Christ said in his own words, speaking of marriage, when a man marries, he leaves his father and his mother, and he joins with his bride and becomes two in one flesh. And St. Augustine says, Christ left his father, that is, he came down from heaven in the incarnation. He left his mother. What is his mother? The synagogue, the Jewish synagogue, which terminated uh, its validity terminated at our Lord's death. So Christ left his father and his mother, and he joined with one bride, the Catholic Church. And he died on the cross, united himself to his bride, the Catholic Church. St. Augustine also says that our Lord Jesus Christ...